Hi, welcome back to the YouTube channel. You guys already know it's your girl, Gabrielle Shante. First off, I just wanna say thanks so much for all the love you guys had given me and that you guys have put on the dental assisting video. That was like crazy. Like I did not expect for it to be a month later and you guys are still running that up and we're at 3,000 views now. So it's my most popular upload that I've had within the last month or so so i'm super super thankful for that but with that comes a lot of responsibility you guys have been asking me to you know talk more about dental assisting and you guys want to know about tray setups and things of that nature so that is exactly what we're going to be getting into today i'm going to be looking down at my ipad but that's because i have some pictures and stuff that i'm going to screen record and go over with you guys about composite tray setups and procedures and all the tools instruments and extras that you guys are going to encounter for all my future dental assistants out there if you guys want the tips the tools and the help i got you i'm right here so let's just get into it all right first things first we're looking at this image here you guys you guys can clearly see that i have all of my tools needed i have all of my drawing tools i have all of my products that are going to be used to get the tooth ready as you guys can see i have my curing light i have my paladin kit out i have everything set out for my doctor that she is going to need in order to complete this procedure so i think first things first let's focus on the instruments that are going to be needed in order to do this procedure all right so first things first with anything that you're going to do you're always going to have a mirror and explorer so we're going to put those in importance there you're always going to have a mirror and explorer that's always going to be a key instrument with limited exams crown procedures composites you're always going to have a mirror and explorer it is the best way for your doctor to view the teeth now as you guys can see i also have a syringe and i have cotton pliers sitting i like to put my cotton pliers closer to my doctor because she personally likes to pick up her burrs with her cotton pliers also my syringe as you guys can see down here the procedure we're going to be doing some bottom molars one's going to be on the left one's going to be on the right and she's going to block for this person so as you guys can see i also have my long needle out let's put a five on that because a good trick to know whether you guys are going to get the blue needle or the bottom is my teachers always told me blue is the sky blue is up so you know you're going to use your blue needle for mostly your maxillary arch and then yellow just make it on the bottom so there as you guys can see i have my q-tips out with my topical of course topical is going to be placed first and then they'll go in with the actual syringe and numb so yes those are some key things to pay attention to let's move on to another slide so you guys can also learn the other key instruments all right so looking ahead here you guys are going to see my pfi on this picture let's put a one down here that is my pfi which is also known as plastic filling instrument this is the instrument that you're going to use to pack in the packable composite um it helps because it doesn't stick that well it doesn't adhere and you're really going to want that when you're packing in that composite we are heavy 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 hemostat people at my office so that's where i'm putting the two next to and i always have a scaler out in case we have to flick some composite that got stuck or bonded or we have to flick something out of the way i always have a scaler so the top instruments i want you guys to focus on let's go back are gonna be focus on your mirror explorer and your cotton pliers and then i want you to really focus on your pfi those are the top four instruments i really want you guys to focus on when doing this procedure so now that we got the instruments out the way let's move on all right so we're still on the same picture a big big thing that you guys are going to want to focus on when you guys are doing these um procedures is it's a composite procedure composites are supposed to be dry composite it works best when the tooth is dry the surrounding areas are dry and i know that sounds crazy because you guys are like we're working in the mouth how do you keep it dry don't ask me don't ask me you see it so you're going to want to make sure you have out cotton rolls i have out my two by two gauze i also have micro brushes down here which can also be used to dry or tap away blood or anything of that instance you want to make sure you have your drying tools out that's going to be key to 
the process. Let's go ahead and identify some of our products. So let's take a zoom in here. Right here is gonna be my caries indicator. Caries indicator is pretty much used to highlight damaged dentin, or I'm pretty sure there's a bigger breakdown, but if you guys want the bigger breakdown on caries indicator, it ain't gonna be this video. Pretty much that, that's placed on the tooth to highlight the damaged dentin or the damaged protein that builds up the dentin, something of that nature. And you know you have to still get it out because that means that's decay. So here is my bond. It's sitting right next to the Dappin dish. I just have it flipped upside down because usually I squirt my bond out and place it over the little hole. So I would do a little bond is usually yellow. <laughs> so I would usually take this and place it on top of that, okay? So moving on. I have a pink tip on this because we were later in the month and we hadn't placed our order so I just had a different tip but moving on you guys this is my flowable that is my flowable flowable can be done the whole composite procedure if your doctor is not a big fan of packable to which I'm running into that a lot a lot of the newer dentists are not the biggest fans of packable even though I think packable offers more structure and a little bit more support to the tooth just my personal opinion it all works the same next as you guys can see I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer I have my hemoband gel so with the hemoband gel, this is usually to make blood clots and kind of stop blood from coming around, especially if you guys are doing crown procedures or composites and your dentist may nick the gums a little bit or there's just blood. You want to place this on the tooth and it's going to stop. A big dog in this process is going to be your edge. Yes, ma'am. Your edge. Edge is always blue. You just know edge when you see edge. It's always blue. She's always a blue girly. Um, that's kind of placed on the tooth to... Pretty much what itch does is it kind of roughens up the surface so when you place the bond it's going to adhere the packable and the flowable better so it kind of takes off just a little bit of that enamel surface to kind of roughen it up to start the process off to my side here this right here is my packable composite you guys that is going to be our packable composite this is what i feel like should still be being used even though i said i, I know the newer dentists are leaning more towards just flowable this is your packable composite as you guys can see the gun is already loaded with one and i have two extras me personally i like to go ahead and use and push out all of my um packable composite because otherwise it just goes to waste you know we don't want to waste product sitting up here this is some desensitizer my dentist likes to place desensitizer sometimes that's just what she does and then of course we have the curing light we have the curing light sitting right there. We have other products that you guys seen that I haven't went over. Floss, Contact Easy, Articulate, Paper, Sand, Strip. I will go over all of that, but now let's just move on. So because I've kind of talked to you guys about all of the products, now we're gonna go over what steps and kind of what order you guys will be using these products in if you are new to the office or if you guys have a test coming up soon and you need to know this. I had to know this at dental assistant school. I don't know how nobody else school is, but I had to know it. So that's what we're about to move on and discuss. Procedure order usually starts off, I don't know if you guys have an old school dentist or anything, but um, my dentist no longer uses spoon excavators to remove the decay and scoop it out. They simply, she goes in with her high speed, she kind of carves out her shape, and then she takes her slow speed and she starts to kind of round out the rest of the soft dentin or the soft tooth. And I know you guys, we talked about caries indicator. Here is where you guys are going to use that caries indicator. So zooming back in on caries indicator, your dentist is usually going to take a micro brush, dip it into the caries indicator, place it on the tooth, and then you're going to rinse it. You'll rinse and dry the tooth. And whatever pink is still left there on the infected dentin, that means your dentist needs to get her slow speed again and work out a little bit more of the soft areas of the tooth. Moving on. If there is any blood, typically my dentist will go ahead and place hemoband. She'll go ahead and place hemoband and she'll take some gauze and cover it for about two minutes. And then you guys will rinse, okay? 
so now let's actually get into the steps of filling up the tooth those are just some extras you guys may go through but if you guys just want straight order high speed slow speed edge bomb blah 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 okay now after you guys if you guys did have to place hemoband or your dentist didn't place hemoband just kept going we're gonna move on to edge edge is usually step one in the beginning of the procedure you're gonna place that on and edge is supposed to sit on the tooth for about 10 to 20 seconds usually 20 seconds um depending on your dentist my dentist leave it on for five seconds she don't really care <laughs> um doesn't mean she's doing anything wrong it's just her method she doesn't leave it on the tooth area long after that you are going to rinse okay let me write that better for y'all sorry after that you guys are going to rinse okay so you'll place edge on for 20 seconds and then you guys are going to rinse that off and dry the tooth usually after this this is when my doctor will go in and actually isolate the tooth with her a cotton roll and a little gauze that is what will happen after that now this is when you guys are going to get your bond so you're going to squirt your bond in you're going to get a micro brush you're going to dip it and you want to hold the dapping dish and the brush over to your doctor to where your when your doctor gets that micro brush he or she can dip go to the tube dip go back to the tube and give you back that brush so with bond after that your dentist likes to air dry it they're going to take the air water and air dry the bond the next step you're going to do, let's put a tube next to bond. The next thing you're going to do, you guys, is cure. I keep making little dots. I'm, you're going to get your curing light and actually cure. Okay? So, after you guys cure that area, me personally, when I'm holding the curing light there, I already have my flowable in hand to give to my doctor. So, as soon as I get done curing, he or she can go ahead and go in with that flowable because that's usually just the next step in patching something up so fourth step after you cure is going to be the flowable so let's hop over a couple pictures and go back to the explorer okay we'll click done and we'll save what we done on this one let's hop back over here really quickly to where we have the explorer okay after my doctor places flowable she likes to kind of go in and use her explorer to kind of move the flowable around so i would say have an explorer next to you your doctor may not even use an explorer um i personally work with another doctor who um he just kind of uses the tip of the flowable to kind of move it around but then but my main doctor that i work with she likes to have her um explorer to move that around but now we're just going to move on back to the picture we were just working on you guys and after the flowable is placed and it's put into position that's when you guys are going to go back and we're going to make the curing light five you want to cure that you want to go ahead and solidify or um polymerize that's technically the word for it your flowable okay so then we're going to hop back. After that's done, your dentist is probably going to ask for flowable again, making that step six, okay? And after that, this is when we get our packable. This is when you're going to take that packable, and that's going to be step seven. Once the packable is placed on the tooth, this is when you need your PFI. We're going to make that step, oh, that's step eight. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. My bad step eight so key thing to notice when we are looking at the pfi there is a plugger in and there is a paddle in typically after the composite or the packable is placed into the filling i would give it to my doctor with the plugger in and then once they packed it in and they want to smooth the top they can switch to the plugger in okay so after that's placed and your dentist gets that nice and smooth we're going to move on down to step nine is gonna be to cure again so we're curing again so to go over these steps with you guys again itch rinse bond dry cure flowable explore potentially cure flowable again explore potentially but typically right on to packable pfi get it smoothed down cure okay that's those are the steps you guys so if you guys ever need help remembering these steps just come to this section okay that is usually the steps now i'm going to get rid of all these things on here because we're going to talk about what happens after you guys have put the filling in because
because now we have to shape to the um, patient's liking. And as you guys can see, I had some other tools that I said I would explain later, articulating paper, floss, contact easy sand strip, how all those things come into the procedure. That is what we're about to talk about. So give me just a moment. All right, so typically, um, Articulate paper is used to check occlusion, whether that's on the incisal edges of the interiors or the occluding areas of the molars, however you wanna say it, however you wanna do it, that is what your articulating paper is for. But if you guys did do an area like a mesial, a distal, if you guys had to do any of those things of that nature, this is where you're gonna have your contact easy come in. So to explain the contact easy, it looks like a little saw, like it's a tiny little saw. It's literally um, the size of an SD card. It's literally the size of an SD card. Um, pretty much with that, your doctor is gonna kind of saw in between the contact area to make sure that the floss can go through without shredding or breaking, okay? Once that's done, if you guys did a mesial or a distal area, this is where your sand strip is gonna come into play. So the sand strip is kind of used to smooth in between there, so the floss is gliding like it would have done with the regular tooth. That is what that is for. Now that I'm talking about occlusion, mesial, distal, buccal, lingual, whatever you guys, the surfaces of the tooth, which is gonna be super important to know. Let's go back to my first image, okay guys? So on my first image, I showed you guys where I had MOD and I had DOB. So 18 MOD is gonna be mesial, mesial occlusal distal, which means it's gonna be the two contact areas of that tooth. And it's also gonna be the occluding side of that tooth. For 30, DOB means distal occlusal buckle, which means it's going to be the distal contact area, the occlusion, and on the cheek side of that tooth, right? So in order to get areas like the mesial and distal and make the contacts perfect, that is where you're introduced to systems like the Garrison. What I'm showing you guys right now is considered the Paladent Kit. That is what we call it. And I can kind of go over um, different variations of this type of system. Um, some of you guys, your doctors may use the Toffelmeyer, which is the little metal tool. It has the matrix band and it also has the wooden wedge. I had to learn how to place it in dental assistant school. I'm sure you are too. Any other form of getting in between the contact areas and making everything look good, that is going to be like a mylar strip, which is that little clear strip that they kind of use to pretty much... Um, for the anteriors. It's usually used on the anteriors. It's wedged in between there to kind of help with the contact areas and things of that nature. So yes, that was the overview of a composite tray setup, what you guys would need, how you guys would use everything, procedure steps. If you guys want more content, just know I got the crown video coming next, but I definitely wanted to talk to you guys about the crown procedure. I mean, oh, I definitely want to talk to you guys about the composite procedure. So thank you guys for watching. More dental assistant stuff coming in the future. So, parties. Bye.